Yeah. One thing is, we talked about how the building is so habitable. Uh, what about the lawsuit for inhab inhability that's against the property owners <laughs> and, the, and the hotel managers mm -hmm. before your program came in and rehabbed mm -hmm. it? And two, the second part of that is, what happened to the people that were moved out to make way for your project? So the first <laughs> question was about the, the, the So the, we're the two or three lawsuits. Yeah. Right? So those were from a even a previous ownership from the current one, a previous management group. So that lawsuit is still happening. Um, we're not involved in it. So I can tell you that the problems that existed that do not exist now, they will definitely not exist once we take over. Um, in terms of people being moved out to make room for our program, I'm the not aware that they occupied about a year ago. So we only we only at, we only started working with the Drake in December. So they didn't even have knowledge of our program. We didn't even get the RFP until about October, November, and we didn't have the Drake in mind right away. There was another hotel we were looking at. So if people left before that, it was had nothing to do with this project, and yeah. Tenderloin Housing Clinic would never support the displacement of people. So we've been very clear about that. We're not displacing anybody that's in the building now. We're working with them and really trying to make it work for both parties. Are you, my, my, the reason I'm making that point is 60% of the people who live there have lived there for 20, 30 years. Mm -hmm. And they're not there anymore. So they wouldn't have moved out just for, just for the sake of moving out. They were moved out by, the, by management mm -hmm. to make way for a project If they took picked up your RFP that they figured that your funding was better than what they can get otherwise. Um, so, well, I guess the, the best answer the, I can get to you now is that point, we have no knowledge. My other point of that so. is, um, <laughs> uh, my, my, probably my major point is, the news article that alerted us yeah. to um, this project in the first place, why wasn't there any community outreach before the project was proposed? Yeah. Because that's the time to come to the community and say, here's a plan for the neighborhood. We, we would like your input. We would like you to, to, uh, mm -hmm. to put in what, what you think would be good for our program. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't done. And if we hadn't picked up that newspaper article, mm -hmm. you wouldn't be here now. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You know what? Sometimes you just have to admit when you make a mistake. And we did. So here we are. We're going to do our best to be good neighbors and good communicators going forward. Um, I wish we had put that step in first. We didn't. So, um, you know, we've done a lot of work here. We haven't had these issues before, but I can see that maybe based on the nature of this program, there's a little more heightened um, alarm systems going off for people. Um, and I don't think that that article was very accurate or... Um, I think that it, it raised a lot of questions that I wish that we could have spoken about first. So it would have been nice had we had this conversation before. So I think what we can, well, I can't go back and change the past. I can change how we move forward in the future. And we're very open to whatever sort of regular communication it takes to make sure that this project goes well and that we have good relationships. I think that we had boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Right. Okay. Several times you've mentioned that the oldies are committed to making their, their lives better. Yeah. Uh, what is the what has been the criteria to choose who is able to come in? Sure. And what kind of security measures are in place to make sure that you mentioned a few things that people are yeah. are good, but uh, they're still free to roam around around the sure. neighborhood. So, so what kind of additional security would there be? Sure. So first of all, let me correct their probation. All of them are their last offense was a non-violent, right? Can I, I can say that accurately? Not 100% of the people. Okay. Um, so, so the commit. So the are they primarily drug related, or what were they? You know, I actually can't speak to the specific charges. Um, with nobody has been selected for the program, right. but I think that um, right. I mean, the, more obviously, the the department people under our supervision run the gamut of many different offenses, but we have not moved forward, as Krista just said, to select anybody to move in. Um, a lot of the selection, as was previously mentioned, is really going to be somebody's readiness for change. How do we define that? So we are going to, so through our other services, individuals are going to need to take steps of participating in different classes, demonstrating kind of a 
commitment to other services that said for you guys are in this neighborhood so you know when somebody's sort of saying I'm going to start going to different classes I'm going to start going to different services I'm going to start meeting with different support services people that there's a gesture of readiness for change and so that's really what we're going to be looking for with individuals that are coming over over what period of time or is that somebody that that will be a yeah. case by case it's hard to know. I mean, we're going to be taking people straight from residential treatment. We're going to be taking people straight from um, jail. We're going to be taking people from the streets. Um, the so basic know. criteria will be homeless. Yeah, I mean, but that's true for probably any of your neighbors. Um, well, not, not to the, to the volume of people that are moving in. So we, so we will be doing the best screening we can to make sure that folks are ready for this program and they want this program. We'll be doing 24-hour desk clerk security. We have surveillance systems that we have in all of our properties that will be put in this property. We will be working very closely with adult probation, so if there is any um, activity that we're concerned about, we will be calling the probation so officer. So the, the, the building we'll itself would be safe, people within, you know, once they've gone outside, is there a curfew or they're just... We are going to have curfews. So uh, depending on, we're, we're building all the program rules right now, but the curfew right now, it looks like the latest would be 11.30 any type, but it depends on what stage they are in the, the program, and just sort of their basic behavior, or like participation in the program, it will depend on that, we'll determine that. So we'll put that jump in the back. Maybe. Oh, I think, oh, okay. Uh, have any of the units been filled yeah. in? No, so we haven't even taken over the lease yet. Oh, okay. The owner is still running the property, uh, and we're, he's doing the improvements. Okay. We are tentatively set for an August 1 start date, but that could be pushed back to September. So in order to get a room there, if you have to be referred by your probation officer? Through the probation department, whether it's case management or probation, yeah, exactly. I think there was, well, I'm gonna let you proctor this. Susan and then Ms. Jill here. Okay, uh, all right, uh, there are a lot of people, uh, I know one who is homeless, has not 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 a criminal of any kind. Uh, fell through the cracks. She's you know the not she's not a domestic violence victim. She's you know she doesn't fit any of the categories, but she is on the street. And uh, I've um, I want to connect her up with a case manager. Mm -hmm. So you know I mean she needs that and 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 how to navigate the system so she gets a place to live. She's. She's become disabled as a result of her being homeless, and uh, this is, uh, you know, this is kind of a very difficult situation. And she's, like I say, they, you know, I mean, it's dangerous on the street. Yeah, and it really is. So you're looking for resources. I mean, you know what? Yes. I actually, just immediately, and I know this is not the topic we're on, but um, Mary Elizabeth Ann has a drop-in center for mm -hmm. women, and mm -hmm. I think that they have case management that could, she could be connected to pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. um, so I mean, all of their focus, all their services are focused on women. So they'd probably be a really good place. Yeah, but she, to she's start. she's been around for four years. Yeah. And 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 it's somehow or other, it, it's always missing the you know the sure. missing the, the the subject category. Yeah. yeah, I think I would start there. I would start with Mary Elizabeth then and see mm -hmm. how that goes. Mm -hmm. Good luck. Okay. Okay. No, the, the right behind you. Yeah. So, uh, in theory, a program like this could be in Bayview or Excelsior? Or it could be anywhere in San Francisco, Oh, in theory. Yes. Uh, I have a great term. Oh, I'm sorry. Who's next to that? Are people have jobs or places? You know, um, well, adult probation will be paid for it. There's no fee to stay at the transitional housing program. There'll be some savings that they have to do, but um, some of the folks will be employed, some of them will not. Some of them may become employed throughout the program, but it's hard to say because we don't know who's in. We haven't selected anyone yet, but I imagine it will run the gamut of folks in different situations. Now, Nancy, um, I was just gonna say that it would be nice, number one, if you have bought some material, especially points when you do, so mm -hmm processes of all these things we are planning to do. Mm -hmm. Two, it would be nice if we had four knowledge of these things before we had to work when we bought the building in a sense. Um, 
that under us and then come to us later on and give us information because we don't we really don't know if that information is valid because um Okay, I just sorry, I just don't don't, mean, don't don't mean to cut you off, but I mean she like I don't want to like rehash this and we're running out of we're but running out of time. You are, had already said that that was a misstep on your part and like you were no, like, no, 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 no. I have already expressed myself. I have already expressed myself. I'm going to do it. Yes. That's it. And you already yeah. mentioned that you're no, no, still no, working I mean, on the not, details and the not plan. Even, not even on time with criteria. Allow me a chance. Well, you, you, you asked the question earlier. Allow me a chance to finish. Thank you. Now, I just want to say that it, the, the thing that I mentioned about the materials that we can actually have for ourselves to actually read over these things so we can understand where you're coming from and what's going on. Right? And this is, that would be nice if we had that. And since so we didn't get that, you know, the conversation of information given out now is almost null and void because after you go, the information is gone from our, from our memories. How about we compromise? How about we do this? Um, sorry I didn't bring anything today. I understand. Yeah. That makes sense. Uh, maybe what we can do is we can come back at a later time when we have a, some of the more the details flushed out and we can maybe have something that we, we hand out that you can look at and you can, you know, it'll give you more information about the program. I, I think that that's a reasonable thing that we can do in the future. Uh, why don't we set up we can do it now if it's okay with you mm -hmm. uh, to come back in our office. The August meeting? Sure. I think that that's fine. I don't see a problem with us coming back in August. Yeah. Then you have some idea what's Yeah, going on. that'll give us some time. I think we'll have a lot better information for you to make you feel a little better. It's written down. <laughs> okay, thank you. But you can hold it to me. You're, you got me on video. <laughs> oh, right. yeah. So this is, you know, a neighborhood in transition where the transition hasn't really even happened yet. Yeah, true. And there's been a lot of back and forth. We have structural problems with our landlords. We have structural problems with the police. We have structural problems with a subset of our neighbors. We actually live in the buildings already. Uh, I was on the board of the health department when, Nakan when they got this, uh, the Windsor Hotel. And the manager is a guy named Nakanishi. And his first eviction, he, he, he was somewhat troubled over. There have been several since then. You can't. God, what I'm kind of wondering is, are you going to, are you going to, are we going to get caught in the lurch when you have a problem tenant, or are you going to be able to evict them? Are you going to be able to move them out? Or is the burden totally on our neighborhood? No, we have, uh, we can't go through the eviction process. There's a, transitional housing is a little bit different. The first six, it's all governed by the, try the Transitional Housing Misconduct Act within the first six months. After six months, it goes to the normal unlawful detainer process. THC knows about evictions. We You've know done some. Them. You know this, <laughs> um, so just because right. he's very connected to our agencies on our it, board. It seems so, to me like this particular block has been getting better since I've been living yeah. here, but there's been a lot of back and forth, and we have yeah. still have a sick, considerable problem. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. We're we're committed to running a very orderly building that is safe, and we're committed to a safe neighborhood. And I think that's demonstrated in the work that THC has done. Not only inside of our buildings, but I also the work that we do with the collaborative. Some of this neighborhood, some of this yeah. improvement on this block goes back to THC. Yeah, absolutely. So I, mean, I think that's the work that our agency does, and so nothing changes with this we have, project. We uh, had a I lot of problems with the, the 101 Club, folks. and that's that's improved considerably in the last decade. So. Absolutely. So we hope that we're only positively contributing to the neighborhood. So I just had a couple of just follow up. Uh, you had mentioned. Uh, 60 units yes. out of uh, what's the total number of units? Well, it's 60 units total. Okay, um, 60 units total in the building? There's 60 units total in the building. Okay, and so how many of those will be? Well, there's eight. I, I'm told, I think there's a roughly 18 permanent tenants. So okay. 18 permanent, so then 40, about f roughly 42 to begin with. Okay. <laughs> then I think, uh, and you'd also mentioned tentatively uh, August or September, and then it's a damn risk of getting. 12 month program? 12 month. We'll be uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you again. And, uh, yeah, thank you guys for your questions, for your candidness. Really appreciate it. And we look forward to coming back in August with more information. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Have a good evening. Thanks a lot. Bye, Mark. Thanks a lot. Bye. Nice to meet you. Thanks so much. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next letters are for 350 Turf Group Housing at 148 years two. Uh, and 45 Leavenworth Group Housing. So, my name is Victor Gonzalez.
Wallace. I'm with Forged Land Company from San Francisco. I've never been on YouTube before, so this is, this is great. Uh, San Francisco uh, Real Estate Development Company. Um, Alex is with me and we'll pass out uh, some reduced sets of the plans that we're working on. Uh, we're working on uh, these two uh, lots, parking lots. Let's pass these around. 145 uh, Turk, and, I mean 361 Turk and 145 Leavenworth. They are, um, that's all I have. So the, they are uh, owned by the YMCA. Uh, so the YMCA's uh, uh, remaining real estate are these surface parking lots. As far as I know, they've been uh, used for parking cars for 60, 70 years. Um, they are small but they're connected underneath uh, the Oasis Hotel, if you know the Oasis on uh, Turk Street. So, so Alex is handing out our plans. Um, uh, 238 group housing units. So I could go on uh, a long time about the project, its design, what it looks like, but I'd like to know what you'd be interested in first, and then I can address uh, you know, my comments that way, sure. Okay, uh, I'll start off. Uh, I understood there was an agreement uh, that that the uh, permanent people, the permanent tenants of like four hotels, that the four hotels or five hotels wish to turn to totally tourist, and they were they were getting an agreement with you that their their tenants would would be moved over. Now. Uh, is that still on? Has the plans changed? Uh, that's not on. That's not part of the project. Well, what, what, you mean it, it, it dropped? It dropped. Okay. okay. If, if you, I can go into detail on that proposal if you want, but it dropped. Okay. Yeah, all right. Because I, I know. Okay. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, uh, no, my, my notes I have is group housing. Yes. Uh, I need to go over what types of groups. And uh, the program that you're putting in there to monitor the program there. Sure. So, uh, group housing uh, are these small units. Uh, they do have a kitchenette in them, and they do have a bathroom in the unit, and they do have amenity space on uh, every other floor. So, basically, uh, what it is is a way to bring the cost of the housing down. It's still all market rate, so I don't want to, you know, say anything uh, that it is uh, below market rate, it's market rate, but the units are small. And they're being built in a very innovative way that brings the cost of providing those units down. And I think everybody knows that building something new in San Francisco costs more than most people can afford. It's just the way it is. So this is an attempt to make it more affordable, um, and mostly to single people. <coughs> But uh, brand new. By affordable, you mean for what are we, I mean, what are we talking about? Now, it'll be market rents. Yeah. But we and have studio, to. I mean, market. Studio, market. Studio, market. studio will be. Never uh, running the Well, uh, we don't know. The studio will be what it rents for in the in the marketplace. But we have to rent it for about fifteen hundred. That's twelve to two thousand dollars. Well, for I, I, we won't get up to two thousand dollars, but. You know, 12, 15, 16 is what we're, we're bracketing. We may not get that. We hope we get that. It seems like so less is more trade. for the Florida Land Company mm -hmm. as they are able to build these some? cubicles and call them uh, housings and charge fewer market rate for something they didn't pay that much for in the first place. How fair is that? Well, we did pay a lot for that. No. You got a bill? You, you, yeah. you, you, no, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't yeah. get a question. No, I'm just saying. I heard what you said. Yeah. You said to, you said that the uh, the cost of the building of the place is not going to be as much, but the rent will be still, I'll use the word, high price. So if you if you, pay, if you build your place for less money, and then you're going to put people in there and go make them pay skyrocket oh, prices. Sorry. Is that unfair? Well, let's oh. let's put it another way. Yeah. If we couldn't do it that way, there'd probably be no project at all. Mm -hmm. You'd still have a surface parking. Yeah. Well, well, see, what do we hear? What's wrong with that picture? 
So you like you like putting you like twisting to my arm and saying if you don't do it my way, you you won't have no no projects. 